right? Mortality is a hundred percent guaranteed, right? So, right. so this idea that like, you know, we're afraid of dying is, is a bit misguided. In some ways it's, we're afraid we don't know when we're going to die. Mm -hmm. There's probably some fear of not existing as well and, and understanding that life is finite. But how did you come to grips with that as with each passing year you found yourself alive? Well, it was a gift that kept on giving uh, because I always had my foot down on the pedal, not to the metal, but down on the pedal. Mm. Uh, I uh, acquired a, an innate intentionality that when people to this day say, how do you do what you do? And I said, one of the big reasons is I'm really good at deciding what I don't do. Hmm. And I've guided my life. So I knew however long I would have, I was just going to make the most of it. And um, I was very grateful for every year. That's a really important point, Walter. At what stage in your career did you go from kind of always incoming, receiving, taking every opportunity that comes your way to this more deliberate focus on saying no? Because I'm sure that the day you graduated from college, you would have done anything. I mean, anything. you did anything. Right. Um, but at some point, as a person matures and becomes more successful and they have more and more obligations, the, the no uh, button becomes a very important button. Right. How, how did you discover that and what were your guiding principles? I would say that the fine tuning of that, it, for, for example, I always was concerned how much time, but that doesn't give you focus. That gives you just a concern for time. But I attended a program at the Center for Constructive change um, when I was in my 30s. It was taught by Fred Jervis, uh, may he rest in peace, and it was a process of thinking that has changed every day of my life. Mm. I do not think in traditional ways that I thought before that. I always think in reverse. So when I'm thinking, I'm going to have the pleasure of spending time with you. I don't think, I never would ask you, what will we do? I would specifically say, if this conversation is really successful, what would have happened by the end of it for us to know that our time was well spent? I ask that question for everything important that I do. Every day. Including personal interactions? Including personal interactions. Hmm. I want to talk about that a little bit because that makes a lot of sense in some contexts, right? That makes a lot of sense at a meeting, right? If you have your senior leadership in for a meeting, it's, it's really important to say, what is the desired outcome of this meeting? How do I want behavior to change? How do I, you know, how do I want people to feel whatever? On the other hand, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that in, uh, you know, and I'm not saying uh, I'm not pushing back on the idea. I'm just sort of thinking through it, which is, you know, I'm going away with my one of my kids for the weekend. And you're saying instead of thinking through the activities you're going to do, walk me through what you're thinking. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you a real life example. Uh, I was actually doing mentoring with one of Jason's friends, he came to see me and he said, you know, I... Jason's one of your sons. Yes. Yep. Sorry. So one of his friends, he was, I think, in his 30s at the time. And uh, he, he just came down to see if he could get some coaching. Uh, and so I said, well, give me some situations you're dealing with. He said, Walter, I work so hard during the day and then I go home and I spend all my energy with my kids from morning to night, at the end of it, they don't seem very fulfilled and I'm exhausted and then I start all over again. Wow, that's a tough life. I have a question you might want to ask them. They're now, I think, 9 and 11 years old. I said, when you get home Friday night, why don't you ask them the question uh, to each of them? If this were a really a fantastic weekend, what would you like to have happen over the weekend? 
They obviously gave them specifics. He was able to do it in like a third of the time. The kids had a fantastic time, and he had two-thirds of his time to relax. Now, do you always need the input of someone else when you're thinking through that? No. Sometimes, sometimes not? No, I would ask myself. So if I were even meeting a friend mm. or meeting a mentee, I'd say, well, Walter, if this were a really successful experience, what would have happened by the end of it? Uh, it's just, I mean, to me, it's like saying good morning. It's just so intuitive. Mm. And it's, there's not a formality. It's a freeing. Peter, it's a freeing. It is not a limitation. It may sound like too much structure. It's the ult ultimate of being free. Because I don't ask myself, what will I do? I ask, what is it that I'd like to have happen? If I'm meeting with a friend who's going through a difficult time, when I'm done, I would like to figure out some time during that time that I will help him lighten that load. I'm not sure when. But when I leave, I want to be able to do that. To me, it's very natural, very powerful, very intentional, very focused, and very gratifying. <laughs> Say a little bit more about what you learned or how you developed your palate around saying no to things. Oh, well, that's a larger, that's a larger question. Uh, so this process of asking about what success would be for an individual one for probably over 40 years, I asked myself the question, if my life is successful over the next three years, it used to be five, now it's down to one, but it's far enough out that I'm not thinking about what I did last year. If I had an ideal life in the next three years, how would I know it? What would be happening? And I would go from my personal relationships, my family relationships, my financial relationships, um, my health. Every key area of my life would have an indicator, and that would be like my ideal outcomes. And then I would kind of, what I think, think backwards. Well, if I want to be, you know, uh, my cholesterol at <laughs> under 100 and I'm at 110, what would it be each six month period? So each one of them have benchmarks. I may be getting into too much detail here for you, Peter, but each benchmark is to me powerful because it says to me at six month intervals, if I make it, I'm on track. If I don't, I haven't failed. I just tell myself, well, whatever you're doing isn't sufficient. So what are you going to do differently? Wow, is that powerful? So. That's how I've been leading my life. So to your question, it is so easy for me to say no when it isn't consistent with the outcomes and the indicators that I've been committed to. Yeah, that takes a bit of discipline, doesn't it? Uh, the first time it'll seem awkward. After 44 years, it's awkward not to do it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the discipline is in the ability to contemplate something that in the moment seems enticing. You know, people talk and are familiar with this idea of fear of missing out. Someone comes to you and says, Walter, I've got this great opportunity for you and da, 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 da. And on the surface, it sounds pretty interesting, but then you have to say, wait, how is that aligned with the goals that I have? Um, you know, one of the tools that I've learned for that, and it's been very helpful for me, I've been in a very concerted effort for the past five years approximately of trying to be more disciplined about that is um, forcing myself to never say yes to anything when asked. So even if I'm really leaning towards doing it, just asking for a couple of days to think about it. And, um, and if I just commit to that one rule, that's like literally the only rule that I, is, is absolutely black and white, which is this sounds very interesting, Walter, let me think about it for a couple of days and get back to you. And then it just buys me the time to, to try to do my own version of that. Um, I still think I probably say yes to more than I should, but I, I think that, that, uh, you know, <clears throat> that one step has probably saved me. 80%. Yeah, that's great. We all have our own techniques. For me, uh, I have to say, when you say it's a lot of structure, my structure provides freedom. Mm. 
it it provides a built-in discipline and it allows for a lot of creativity because I never never talk about how I'm going to do it. So I am completely free to figure out how. 